So let's do a quick review of scientific notation here. It's really critical for this course that you feel comfortable using scientific notation and that you also know how to enter the scientific notation into your calculator properly. And we're going to go over both things in this section. So the way I think about scientific notation, I think about the fact that small numbers are associated with negative exponents. Letter B on the first page is a perfect example. We got a negative 15, it's negative, so um, I know that the resulting number when I convert it over to decimal form is going to be really small. And the opposite also holds true. If I have a positive exponent, like in letter D here, I have 3.5 times 10 to the positive 6, then I know that that's going to turn into a big number when I convert it over to decimal form. Let's do a little bit of practice. First, I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way just by counting steps. And then I'll give you a couple of examples of how you can toggle between scientific notation and decimal form on your calculator. Alrighty, so let's start with letter A. It has a negative exponent. So I know that number is gonna become really, really small. So I need to move my decimal point to the left here. So I'm gonna start with 1.2 and I'm gonna move that decimal point nine spaces to the left. After I put zeros in all those empty spaces, I wind up with eight zeros. So I'm gonna have, and you can put a zero out front as well if you want, want that doesn't count towards anything. So we're gonna have zero point eight zeros one two as our decimal form of 1.2 times 10 to the negative 9. Alrighty, letter B, we have a negative 15, so we know that's going to be a super small number. Where's our decimal point here? So our decimal point is going to be all the way to the right of the 22. Now I'm going to move my decimal point 15 spaces to the left and put zeros in all of those spaces. Alrighty, so at the end of the day, you should have 13 zeros and then the 2-2 two, two on the end. Your decimal point is now up front and if you want, you can throw another zero up front. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, I'm not very consistent about that and so it's just a matter of personal preference if you want that zero up front. This next example has a positive exponent. So we know it's going to turn into a bigger number. So I'm going to move this decimal point um, nine spaces to the right. So I need to add eight zeros, right? Like the first jump is taken by the five, and then I have eight more jumps after that. So I'm going to do one, five, with eight zeros after that. And at this point, you're like, what about sig figs? Let's not worry about sig figs yet. We'll get to that. Um, but eight zeros on this one, really big number. What is that? Um, 1.5 trillion. And here we also have a big number, same kind of approach. The first jump to the right is gonna be to get rid of that, to move it away from the five. And then we got five more jumps after that, or five more zeros to add. One, two, three, four, five. Because it was like one, two, three, four, five, six, right? We, we moved it that many times. All right, this is another one where we're not seeing the decimal point at first. So we know the decimal point is there, which means since it's all the way to the right already, we're just going to add four zeros to that number. So I quickly want to go over how to use your calculator to enter numbers in scientific notation. A lot of students will argue with me on this point and say, well, I know how to do it. Um, they put times 10 carat. Uh, trust me, that leads to problems down the line and you gotta use a lot of parentheses. So using the E format is the way to go, especially in chemistry. Let me show you how that works. So on letter D, we have the number 3.5 times 10 to the sixth. So in my calculator, I want to do 3.5. And then, I know I said it's the E format, but you're looking for a double E on your calculator. On this model, it's above the X to the negative 1. So I'm going to hit second. 
x to the negative 1, and then my e pops up. That takes the place of times 10. So at this point, all I need to do is hit 6, and I'm done. I've entered 3.5 times 10 to the 6. What's cool about this is if I hit enter at this point, um, the calculator converts that value to decimal form. So I can use this as a method to check. Did I convert properly to decimal form? Let me warn you though, if the number's too big, like, or too small, like 2.2 .2 times 10 to the negative 15, that's not gonna work out because we're gonna, we don't have enough space there. Um, say though I wanna keep it in scientific notation. So then I'm gonna hit second science slash engineering. Flow is decimal, just cursor over to psi, and now it's back in scientific notation when I hit enter. Here we're asked to work the same problem, but from the opposite direction. So I have this very large number, and because it's a large number, I know that when I convert it to scientific notation, it's gonna have a positive exponent. And just like in the previous set of problems, I know that if I'm not seeing a decimal point, the decimal point is gonna be all the way to the right of the number. So in chemistry, we wanna keep the scientific notation as one number out front and then point blah, 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 whatever the rest of the number is. But the scientific notation usually has that standard format. So I'm gonna to have to move the decimal place all the way to here. And if I do that, that's one, two, three, four, five, six jumps. So therefore I'm gonna write my regular number as 1.0504 times 10 to the sixth. So we're gonna talk about sig figs in a second here and you're gonna understand why I left those zeros off. But hold up for that. Here we have a very small number, and so we know that's gonna have a negative exponent associated with it. So I need to move the decimal place all the way to here. So I'm gonna do one, two, three jumps, and so this is gonna wind up being 2.0 times 10 to the negative three. On letter C, we have another really small number, so I know that it's gonna have a negative exponent. And let's see, I need my decimal place to be right here between the five and the seven so I can have that um, standard format, the number point blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna need to move it one, two, three spots, and then I can rewrite this as 5.71 times 10 to the negative third. Last one, we have another larger number, so positive um, exponent. And I need to move that decimal place all the way to here. So that's one, two, three, four jumps. So we'll do 9.0201 times 10 to the fourth. Let's check our answer to 2a using our calculator. So I'm going to type in the number 1,050,400 and then I'm going to change it to scientific mode. If I was in scientific mode already, it would show up on the bottom here. I don't see it. So second and then hit the degree. Now I'm going to cursor over and select SCI for scientific. And when I hit enter, Notice how SCI pops up on the bottom there. That tells me that I'm in scientific notation mode. And now I hit enter. And as you can see, it's 1.0504 times 10 to the sixth. So that verifies the work we just did on the board. Let's practice entering scientific notation correctly in the calculator. So for letter A, it's 3.1 times 10 to the sixth. So I'm gonna do 3.1. And you remember it's second, hit, look for that double E and it's gonna pop up as a single E. So 3.1, hit a six times 5.6. And I'm gonna do the same thing, second E, and this time to the third power. 
and I get 1.736 times 10 to the 10th. On letter B, we're going to do some division. So 2.72 second E, and that's the third power, divided by 4.31 second E. Now it's a negative exponent, so I'm going to do negative 21 on my calculator. Hit enter so we could see the answer here. And I'm not going to report it to that many sig figs. We'll do 6.31 times 10 to the 23rd. So let's do letter C. 4.0, and I'll do second E, negative 3. The minus that's an operation is over here. So I'll do minus, and then the negative is down here. Negative 3.5, second E, negative 2. And when I do that, I get 3.9 times 10 to the negative 2. Say, that's a pretty small number, right? In terms of, it wouldn't be that hard to write in decimal form. So if you get a number like that and you're like, why am I using scientific notation? Hit second, science, go back to flow, hit enter, and now you can just see your number in decimal form. On letter D, we absolutely need parentheses. And you may be thinking, well, how am I to know when we need parentheses, when we don't need parentheses? So for letter D, if you think about PEMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, multiplication is going to come naturally before division. And the calculator always follows the order of operations, unless you use parentheses or tell it otherwise. So what's going to happen if we enter it without parentheses is that the division would occur first and then the addition would happen second. And that would give us a different answer. So I'm going to put parentheses around my numbers in the top. So I have 4.85 e to the negative 3 plus 0 0.00256, close the parentheses, and then I hit divide, and then I have 4.53 second e to the ninth. And my answer here, so right now, this is an awesome example. Right now, I'm not in scientific notation. There's no SCI popped up there. But my answer was given to me in scientific notation because it's such a small number, and the calculator can't um, write out all those zeros. There's just not enough space. So we'll do 1.64 times 10 to the negative 12. So I cut it off and round it because of sig figs, but don't worry about that quite yet. You can come back and look at these again after we go over sig figs. But 1.64, and then you see your negative 12 over there. So I wrote it as times 10 to the negative 12. So you can add numbers in scientific notation with numbers that are just in decimal form. The calculator can totally handle that. So we'll do 2.12 times 10 to the third plus 8.56. And I'm getting quite a big number, um, 2,128.56. We don't need that many sig figs. Again, we'll get there. So the appropriate thing to do would be to, to select second psi get this back into scientific notation. So 2.13 times 10 to the third. But at this point, as long as you're getting the right answer, that's what I'm looking for. Last one, we have 3.56 times 10 to the third. So I use the E key. And because I use the E key, I don't need the parentheses. And I'll hit there's two ways to do this. You can hit the squared button with this little X right here. And we get 1.27 times 10 to the seventh. The other option, and it should give us the same answer, 
is to do caret, so that little up mark, square. And we get the same answer.